In this video, I want to talk about five prison myths and just how mythical they really are. Are they for real or are they just made up? Number one, dropping the soap. I get asked about this question so many times in the comment sections of the videos here on After Prison Show. Joe, did you ever drop the soap? And my common reply to that question is usually yes. Many times, in fact. I mean, soap is kind of slippery. Oh my God, I just dropped the soap. While in prison, yes, you will have to take showers around other prisoners. Five, 10, even more prisoners will be in the shower at the same exact time as you, but ball naked, standing right Right next to you washing their own nasty asses right along with you and while you are in that prison shower I can guarantee you that at least one time while you are in there you will drop the soap and then your little bar of soap goes sliding all the way across the prison shower between the legs of some other guy well what exactly takes place when that happens well for one a good rule of thumb anytime you're going to take a shower inside of a prison shower it's always a good idea to have two bars of soap just in case that slippery little bar gets away from you because once that soap hits the floor and shoots across that prison shower between the legs of another guy you might as well consider that bar of soap gone forever there's no need to go scrambling across the prison shower floor on your hands and your knees in search of that lost bar of soap. It's gone. And when that bar of soap does get away from you and hits the floor, because every prisoner in prison knows that specific sound of exactly what it sounds like when a bar of soap hits the ground inside of a prison shower. They will begin to joke on you. Oh, you dropped the soap. You gonna get that bar of soap, dude? And no, it's not a good idea to go squatting down in a prison shower to pick up that bar of soap. So again, that's why it's a good idea to have that backup parachute inside of your soap dish, that secondary bar of soap, in the event that something like that does happen. Because I have to tell you, it will happen. Now to expand upon that a little, if and when you do drop that bar of soap in a prison shower and the myth that when you bend down to pick it up another prisoner will magically appear right behind you that's not entirely true okay because i have seen people drop the soap in prison and then bend down squat down balls damn near hitting the shower floor to pick up that bar of soap and no other prisoner appeared right behind them in fact what did happen is when they bent down to pick up that that bar of soap with their balls damn near slapping off of the shower floor other prisoners in the shower as well watching this happen because when you drop the soap all eyes will magically appear on you but other prisoners who are in the shower watching your next move after you have dropped that bar of soap they will immediately begin to make fun of you to joke on you and to make you the but, no pun intended, of the joke. God, look at you. You're picking up the soap from a prison shower floor. Do you know how much semen is on that floor, you nasty mother? So the chances of a prisoner actually walking up directly behind you after you've bent down to pick up a bar of soap that you dropped in a prison shower isn't as likely to happen as everybody will begin to absolutely make fun of you to the fullest. Number two, prison food is the worst food ever. This myth is actually a lot more true than it's not. In fact, TV shows don't do too bad of a job portraying prison food to be just as horrible as it really is. You have to understand that while locked up, prisons are going to try to keep prisoners housed for as cheap as possible. And a big part of keeping things cheap is the prison food. They are certainly not going to go out of their way at all to make prison food anything really desirable at all. In fact, I cannot think of one single prison meal that I actually ate over the course of all of the time that I spent locked up that was actually good. In fact, in most cases, prison food is actually downright horrible. Some of the worst food that I have ever had while in prison is bread that is actually as hard as a hockey puck, prison oatmeal that is so watery and runny and disgusting, and no lie, I have actually found bugs in my prison watery oatmeal before. I've also eaten something that is called Creo Mac. The Creo and Creo Mac stands for creation. And what this means in terms of a prison meal is they will literally take 
all of the old leftover food that has been served throughout the course of the week and put that into a pot, stir it up, and then pour that over top of noodles. Bad, disgusting prison meat, rotten vegetables, sauces that consist of who the hell knows what, all mixed together and pour it over top of some noodles. It is quite disgusting. And to only further add just how much I know about prison food, forget the fact that I spent most of my adult life locked up eating that crap, but I also used to work in a prison kitchen, and I have seen some pretty disgusting things take place in that kitchen. You really don't want to know just what takes place inside of a prison kitchen. It's disgusting. And just as an added bonus to just how horrible prison food really is, there was actually a case that developed while I was incarcerated that happened in the state of Texas where prisoners were actually being fed dog food. And this allegedly happened by mistake, these prisoners in Texas being fed dog food. But my own personal belief in this case is that they only claimed it was by mistake. When they got caught actually feeding dog food to the prisoners. Prison myth number three, prison is a crime school. I will never forget that scene from the movie Blow when George Young stated that he went to prison with a bachelor's in marijuana and came out with a master's in cocaine. There was this myth that while in prison, prisoners will only learn to commit more crimes. And to be completely honest with you, this one is kind of true. I cannot begin to tell you just how many times I have seen and heard other prisoners talking about their crime techniques, the crimes that they do, the crimes that they commit, and literally passing this knowledge on to other prisoners. In fact, in some cases, they even trade this kind of information. Hey, I can teach you how to manufacture methamphetamine. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I can teach you how to make counterfeit money. In fact, while I was incarcerated, I learned quite a few things that I never even thought were possible. A big part of being locked up is sort of reliving your heydays. Highlights of all of your criminal activities. I've seen this personally, hell, I've done it myself. Just in telling stories of the crazy ass things that I have done in the past. Now, in no way am I proud of these things, but this is a way that prisoners do pass time while locked up talking and telling crazy stories. And a big part of that will actually be educating other prisoners on crime that they never even knew anything about. It does happen. Whether on purpose or mistakenly, prison really can be a crime school. Prison myth number four, going up to the biggest, baddest guy while locked up and punching this guy in the face. For so long throughout my life, I have heard this myth that as soon as you get to prison, the first thing that you have to do is walk up to the biggest, baddest motherfucker there and literally punch that guy dead in his face. Well, I have to assure you, there is a lot more myth to this than actual fact. Because if you do go to prison and immediately upon getting there, you attempt to walk up to the biggest, baddest motherfucker there and hit that guy in his face, that really is not gonna do anything good for you. In fact, the myth continues that if you do this, you will automatically be given all of this respect for doing so. But in every single case that I've personally experienced myself, that is something that you better never do. When you arrive at prison, the very first thing you should attempt to do is not do that at all. And in fact, stay completely out of the way. That means you are causing no problems for anyone else. You're not being nosy and involving yourself in stuff that does not pertain to you. And in a sense, you are basically kind of keeping to yourself. But also while keeping to yourself, showing other prisoners there that you're a cool guy. Hey, how you doing? What's happening with you? If anybody comes up to talk to you, it's a good idea to talk to them and begin to feel out this new environment. Uh, not literally feel out, but to begin to get a better sense of this new place that you will be spending time at. Walking up to the biggest, baddest guy at the prison and attempting to punch him in the face will only result in you having a world of problems on your hands. Because you don't know if that biggest, baddest guy is involved in some sort of a gang, which there is a high likelihood that he could be. And then it won't only be that big, bad guy that you have to worry about. It will be his entire gang possibly wanting to kill you. So it's not a good idea to walk up to the biggest, baddest guy upon arriving at prison 
and attempt to hit him in the face. That's not gonna end well for you. And finally, prison myth number five, getting raped in prison. Now before I dive into this, I kinda wanna tell you about something that just happened to me recently. I was in an Uber car taking a ride and when I got into the car, me and the driver began to talk and the driver asked me, hey, what do you do for a living? And I said, you know, I make videos for a YouTube channel called After Prison Show. I served seven years in prison. And the driver responded to me with two different questions. One, what is YouTube? And two, you were in prison. I don't mean this to sound messed up, but did you ever get raped? You don't mean this to sound messed up. What the hell kind of question is that? And how do you not know what YouTube is? Getting raped in prison, I'm not exactly sure how to put this because it's not really a myth at all and this is actually something that really can happen and does happen. Depending on what state, what facility, what level, there is a lot of different variables to go into the likelihood of you actually getting raped in prison. Obviously at the lower level institutions, rape does not happen as much. At the institutions that I was at, a level one and a level two, I never saw anyone get raped. I met individuals who had come from higher level institutions who in fact had been raped. Now they would never just come out and say that they had, but being in prison and how gossip tends to run rampant throughout prisons, it would not take long for prisoners to arrive at this prison from higher level institutions and people would actually know these prisoners from those institutions and that's where the rumors would begin. But getting raped in prison is something that actually does happen. And in some cases, there is not a damn thing you can do about it. Whether you are attacked in a prison shower, that is something that can and does happen. But more so at these higher level institutions, you will be attacked in your own cell. There are even instances where guys who were raped in prison were actually drugged before they were actually raped. Meaning that somebody came up to them offering them a cup of some homemade prison wine and inside of that cup was a bunch of Thorazine pills that when they drunk this wine, they completely knocked them out and, they had, and the next thing they knew, they had woke up and they had been raped. Getting raped in prison is something that does happen, but there are things that you can do to lessen the likelihood of that happening. Staying out of stuff that does not pertain to you at all, basically attempting not to involve yourself in all of the crazy shit that goes on inside of a prison on a daily basis, trying to limit your involvement in all of the madness by not starting beefs or looking for trouble with prisoners that you really have no business starting beefs with, and by being observant to the things that are going on around you. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to pinpoint inside of a prison situations and other people who are locked up with you that you don't need to associate with or be a part of. There's a lot of myths about being locked up. And in this video, we've addressed five. And who knows, maybe in another video, we can do this again and address other myths. But I do hope that this video sheds some light on some things that may or may not be so true in relation to prison. Hey look, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know exactly what you thought about it. And until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace.